Hi, in this video I want to go through the key sedimentary rock types that you need to be able to recognise, identify and describe for your exams. Let's go through um, each of these in turn. We'll start with the clastic sediments. This is a conglomerate. It's a sedimentary rock, clearly clastic. You can see the, the rounded clasts held together with the cement there. And the thing that makes this a conglomerate is the size of those clasts. So these are more than four millimeters across on the Wentworth scale. Um, and they can be up to bolder size, uh, these clasts. In addition to that, the shape of them is, is rounded. So they can be sort of fairly texturally mature, uh, these sediments. This particular example here you can see has got a quartz cement, um, really well cemented together. Uh, you can see that there's no, not really any um, pore space in between any of these clasts, although you can see some finer um, clasts in between the, the large pebbles there. Okay. This rock is also, this one in particular, uh, has some very hard um, rock material there making up the class. These are actually flint, which is a type of quartz. So it's uh, sort of mineralogically fairly mature as well. In contrast to this, we have a breccia. Now a breccia, like a conglomerate, has coarse grained clasts. Again, greater than four millimeters um, in size. Um, this, this one is relatively poorly sorted. You can see there's a, a finer grained uh, matrix in between the uh, class there. This particular one it does illustrate well, though, the key differentiator between a breccia and a conglomerate. The, the class in this particular specimen are angular. You can see as well that there's a red coloration to these uh, to this particular rock. Um, that indicates some iron oxide. It's a hematite uh, cement holding together these clasts. Breccias are immature. They really haven't been transported very far. Not many processes have uh, started to sh change or shape or sort these clasts, indicating that it's been deposited probably quite rapidly and also quite close to the source of this sediment. The next rock is a siltstone. A siltstone, as its name would imply, can, is made up of class of silt size. So these are between 1 16th and 1 256th of a millimetre across. This rock feels just a little bit gritty okay, when you, when you rub it. Okay. There will be some quartz in here, but also uh, there will be a fair quantity of clay minerals. The next rock, getting finer again, is mudstone. Uh, a mudstone is predominantly um, made of clay minerals. So their grain size is going to be less than 1 256th of a millimetre for most of the class in this. It can feel very smooth when you rub this. Now mudstone can vary quite a lot. Into, it's a, the most common sedimentary rock. Uh, it can be deposited in um, fresh water, in marine uh, environments, uh, estuaries, deep sea, lakes, all types of environments. What they all have in common, though, is they're all low energy. The sandstones are dealt with in another video. So we'll move on to the chemical sedimentary rocks. 
These are rocks that are precipitated directly from solution. So the minerals are dissolved in water and the chemical process of precipitation leads to those minerals being deposited on the um, bottom of the, the water body from where they come. One well, of the most common of these is a carbonate mud. So calcite, um, chemically precipitated, uh, usually out of seawater, uh, in its microscopic scale, um, to give a, a, typically a limestone. Now limestone in its purest form is going to be white. The more clastic input, the more perhaps carbon uh, goes into uh, our sedimentary mix, the darker the colour is. So we can find limestones that are the black in colour. This forms in warm, shallow, marine conditions. Again with low energy though to deposit this very fine grain material. Perhaps where evaporation rates from the sea are very high. So uh, typically um, lagoons behind uh, reefs, for example, might be a place where these are deposited in, uh, in quantity. It's very distinctive stuff, mostly because of its reaction with the hydrochloric acid. It's not the only type of limestone though. We can also find a new lytic limestone. Now these, this is a limestone made up of tiny balls of calcite. In this case between 0.5 and 1 millimeter in diameter, you can find them up to about 2 millimeters in diameter. In rare cases even bigger, but we tend to call that a piezolithic, piezolithic limestone. Now ooliths are formed by the gradual accumulation of calcite around some type of nucleus. They're rolled around by wave action. So these can only form in very shallow, warm seas, where we have calcite precipitating and the action of waves to move these around to create this even coat of calcite, creating these sort of very spherical structures. Unusually, these structures are, are built up, they, they accumulate over time. They're not the result of a larger angular fragment being eroded down to this smaller size. If we look at this in a thin section, we see um, very clearly on this um, image the nucleus, the darker coloured material uh, in the middle uh, of the ooid and then these concentric layers of calcite that's deposited around uh, that building up this um, spherical um, ball of calcite. We still see these forming today, the uh, Bahamas for example. It's very distinctive stuff. You see the nucleus there, you can see concentric rings. We even see on this uh, image very clearly the crystals of the calcite that's cementing these ooids together. The last type of chemical sediment we need to think about are the evaporites. Now there's a number of different minerals that can be deposited in this way. This is where we have a, a body of water that, that dries out, leaving behind the dissolved minerals. We can find gypsum as a deposit. Um, the northeast of England, we find uh, significant deposits there. Or we can find halite, uh, common rock salt, you know, that you might put in your chips or we, that we spread on the roads to uh, um, de-ice them in the winter. They're very important. Uh, economic resources. Sometimes we even find them in this beautiful form of a of a desert rose. These are bladed crystals of, uh, of gypsum that form in these coastal salt flats. Our final type of sediment are the organic or the biological sedimentary rocks. 
This is a rock where the majority of the rock is, comes from the remains of organisms, things that were once living. Chalk, for example, is a limestone. It's predominantly, almost entirely, made of uh, calcite. Drop some acid on this and it'll fizz vigorously. But if we look at this rock carefully, we'll see that there are this rock is made up of the shells of microscopic marine organisms. We call them coccoliths. Relatively deep sea deposit. Um, but you really can't see it by looking at a specimen. Even with a hand lens, you're not going to see these individual organisms. To do that, we need to get an we need to look through an electron microscope to look at the images that are made, and we can see these beautiful shells, but on a, on a really tiny scale. These will be microns across. It's important stuff, really, because of the uh, pores and the, uh, the joints within the chalk that create a very porous rock. Um, it's a very important aquifer. Uh, a water-bearing rock for the southeast of England. Also, some of the um, most impressive landscape features of the south coast of England are formed by this white chalk. We can find other types of limestones as well that are predominantly made of organic material. This particular example uh, is made of um, largely of shell material. Again, made of calcite. There is uh, some iron oxides in the matrix here, giving it its colour, but the bulk of that rock will be calcite. This is another type of organic sedimentary rock. This is a, a coral limestone, or sometimes called a reef limestone. You can see that um, a high proportion of this rock is actually made of coral fossils. The type of deposit that we'll find uh, from a, an ancient reef. So the corals growing in very shallow water, uh, trap sediment around them, um, starts to bury the coral so the coral continues to grow. It's how reefs de develop. But this creates a very distinctive rock. Though it is important to look carefully for the internal structure of a coral to see the um, internal features. They look a bit like spokes on a bike wheel. That tells us that we're looking at something biological rather than uh, clastic fragments within this rock. The final type of organic sediment we need to consider is coal. Strictly, not really a rock, but this material is made up of the remnants of plant material that's been effectively pressure cooked, heated and pressured over long periods of time to remove a lot of the volatiles, a lot of the um, material that isn't carbon. And over time, with more pressure, with more heat, this material becomes more and more carbon rich. This particular example is what we call bituminous coal. It's a high proportion of carbon, but there are other materials in there. Um, this is the most common type of coal mined, although not the best type of coal that we can find. We'll look more at coal when we look at um, geological resources. Anthracite, which is another type of coal, is arguably the best type of coal. It's a um, higher proportion of carbon, looks slightly different. Uh, this one is shiny compared to uh, bituminous coal, which is dull. Um, you get more heat from this when you burn it but it is a bit harder to get it to light. So, to conclude, there are lots of different types of sedimentary rock that you need to be able to recognise. 
But how we describe them, how we interpret them, depends very much on the processes that deposited them in the first place, whether they're clastic, whether they're chemical, whether they're organic. It's really important that we learn to recognize these different types so we can make a good and accurate identification and interpretation of each of these rocks. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it to class. I'll see you then.